Penn State fans with their banners and incidentally uh, North Carolina State has a few hundred fans who have followed their favorite team up here from North Carolina. All right, let's go. Now we practice, let's go. So we have 13 minutes and 48 seconds left as Marty is back at the goal line for Cheryl's kick. He will not run it out. So Cheryl does an excellent job and Penn State will start at the Penn State 20. You know what's happened here Ray and it happens to good teams it happens to bad teams but Penn State jumped off they came out here very fired up really blocking at the hole got a 14 point lead somewhat went into a shell not really into shell but all at once they didn't play like they started the game and now they find themselves behind and they've got to get it going again. Woody Petchel one yard. A.W. Jenkins has moved in at middle guard. Higgins is getting a brief rest. But North Carolina State right now is a very intense fired up football team not only offensively but defensively. It is second down and nine at the Penn State 21. Barbenchak and Cephalo are wide to the right. Barbenchak, the intended receiver, but well covered on the play, and it is third down and nine. I think Andrus wisely threw that ball high because uh, he was covered. It could have been an interception if he had thrown it on target. In comes Dave Stutz, and in a moment, a big third and nine call for Penn State. Marvin Jack comes to the left. Cephalo, wing back left. Marvin Jack. First down. He managed to elude Ralph Stringer just enough to get the first down. That's right, Ray. I think this was a pass. He was trying to get Cephalo deep here. As you see, he kind of wanted to throw the ball. He wasn't open. He decided to run, and very wisely so, because he made a fairly made a first down. A good run by Barvin Tech, and a good decision because Cephalo was coming. So Penn State gets a big first down. Petro. He gets about three yards to the 34-yard line where Eddie Poole and Mike Miller of the secondary make the tackle. Boy, it's hard to get it back. They had it to start with, and the offensive line was really coming off the ball, and now they have to come off the ball, and sometimes it doesn't come back as easily as it did like the start of the game. Second down, seven. Eddie Poole, the defensive halfback, is called for interference. Uh, 23 and a defense pass interference. I thought it was a pretty obvious call, right? Even though he played it well, he made his move a little too quick. You'll see on the replay, he comes over Barbin Chuck's shoulder before the ball gets there, and that is illegal, of course. As you see right here, just, just timed it a little too soon. First down at the Penn State 48 yard line. Petrol, no gain. Middle guard, Tom Higgins. Those big holes we saw in the first half are not showing up there now, and it's actually putting Penn State in a bad position because now it's instead of second and five and second and two, it's been second and ten, and it puts a different aspect on this ball game. Cephalo goes out of the huddle to the right. Barbin Jack comes off to the near side. Second down, 10. Petchel gets three yards, and he ran into Higgins. Boy, he is really high, number 50. That's right, and they haven't been able to block him this half. He, whatever they said at halftime works, but this young man is really going good, and those cheerleaders still look happy, but maybe some of the fans aren't quite so happy right now. Third down and eight at the 50. 
11 minutes left in the game. Loss of three, fourth down. Carter and Easter make a big play on Andrus. And now a very dangerous return man, Ralph Stringer, is back for Barr's hunt. Fair catch. North Carolina State will have the ball at the North Carolina State 18-yard line with 10.34 left in the game. With a score, North Carolina State 15, Penn State 14. We'll be back right after this. Dave Robinson, what reaction do you get down at the field? Well, Ray, everybody's looking for the big play right now by the defense, and the feeling is if we can get a big play now, we'll win this game easy by eight, nine points. So back to you, Ray. Okay, Dave Robinson. Bucky gives to Brown. Mike Johnson makes the tackle, but not before the dangerous Brown, who has already gained over 100 yards, picks up five yards. Brown has ran the ball now 26 times for 130 yards. You can see what kind of day he's having. He gets through that line awfully fast. A good tackle by Johnson. Second down and five. Here goes Brown again. He lost his footing. As a result, he picks up only two yards, and it's going to be third and three at the North Carolina State 25. You know, the Bucky brothers, Dave Bucky, the quarterback, is nine for 18 for 175 yards, and his brother, Don Bucky, has caught five passes for 98 yards. So that's quite a combination. Change at guard, North Carolina State, Ed Callaway replaces Tom Surface. It is third and three at the North Carolina State 25. Nine and a half minutes left in the game. Great protection. Intended for Don Bucky, Mike Johnson defending. It is fourth down, and Penn State's defense does the job. Well, that's the time they had to do it. Time is a factor now because Penn State, of course, has to get something going pretty quick. There's only nine minutes left in this ball game. Nine minutes, 19 seconds. So from here on in, time is critical. With the score, North Carolina State 15, Penn State 14. We'll be back right after this.
North Carolina State, fourth down three. Johnny Evans, who's averaged 44 yards a punt this season. Single return man, Rich Marty, following win here for the punter. And it is out of bounds at the Penn State, they haven't marked it yet, 39-yard line. So Evans, under pressure, short punt, Penn State, great position. Next week, it's the Penn State Football Television Network special. You'll see highlights of the 1975 season, preview of the Penn State pit game, comments from the Penn State coaches, and many more features. Well, Max, a great, uh, great break there for Penn State as they rushed Evans. That's right. They do that in those situations that it's proved helpful all year. They got good field position. Now they got to get something going. This is tight end, Mickey Schuler. Well, they haven't been getting the ball much to the tight end lately, but they do here, and Schuler makes a great catch and a big play. That moves it up close to beyond the midfield strike. So. But Chris Barr, you know, you don't have to get too close. First down at the 46-yard line of North Carolina State. Donovan. Five yards before Richard Wheeler of the secondary makes the tackle. They had Mark Thomas out in front of that play and almost only one man away from breaking it for a long game. Second down, five. Time left in the game, eight minutes, 20 seconds. North Carolina State leading by one point. Barbenchak and Donovan are wide left. This is Geis. First down. Big power running Steve Geis. The sophomore from Lock Haven gets a first down. Again, he keyed off of a block by Mark Thomas, as you see, pulling to the right. He made the trap block. And Geis has been the difference here today. He's hard to bring down. He gets that extra yardage. First down at the North Carolina State 34-yard line. Taylor. Dwayne Taylor gets uh, no more than about two yards. He ran into Kyle Wesco and Tom Higgins. Tom Rafferty left the game limping, and he's been replaced at left guard by Dan Trail from Carnegie. Second down, eight. Geis, no gain. Oh, somebody made a beautiful defensive play there on Gus. I think that might have been Higgins again that broke through a block and uh, killed this one. Yeah, you see Higgins, he killed it before it got started. If they're giving out any game balls today, I think Higgins will be first in line. It is third and eight at the 32-yard line. Greg Kubis is in at left guard instead of Rafferty. Marvin Chack is left. Double wing. Geis in motion. Incomplete. Mike Miller thought he had an interception. It is fourth down and Barr. Watch the pressure now on the quarterback. You can see a big rush put on by Dave Meyer coming right there. You can see him make a move. And of course, it took something off the ball. That's the reason it was off target. But he trapped the ball, so it wasn't an interception. Mike Miller the trap the ball. Barman Shack will hold. 39 plus 10, a 49 yard attempt by Barr. It is short to the right. North Carolina State gets the football. 625 left in a game that has all the earmarks of going right down to the wire. Boy, we had it last week just the same way. With a score, North Carolina State 15, Penn State 14. We'll be back right after this.
Virginia 14, Pitt 7. After Chris Barr's missed field goal, first and 10, North Carolina State at the Wolfpack 20, 6.25 left in the game as North Carolina State has battled back from a 14-0 deficit to lead at 15-14. carries for two or three yards ran into Buttle and Crosby how's the time uh, it's very important not to let any first downs get in there because the clock is running it's just about to hit six minutes and a first down here would be uh, more than one first down here would almost be fatal second down seven and a half Goes Brown again. He's to the 25 yard line. It'll be third down and five. Capacity crowd watching the final home game for the Nittany Lions this year. Third and five, 25 yard line of North Carolina State. Five and a half minutes left in the game. Don Bucky and Elijah Marshall are wide to the left. Flipped it out of bounds. It is fourth and five. Tommy O'Dell played it good, and for some reason, I almost ex expected Tommy O'Dell to make an interception here because he does it so often in key positions. And you see here, he gets a hand on it and almost could have came down with it. So with 5:18 left in the game, a signal is given for official timeout. So with the score, North Carolina State 15 and Penn State 14. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Lottery's Lucky Lotto Game, where you tune in and play at home for big money. Over 120,000 weekly winners with prizes to $10,000. And finalists compete on the tube for up to $5,000 plus $500 a month for life. It's Play TV. So buy your $1 tickets and tune in Thursday nights. Lucky Lotto. You could really clean up. Oh. If you have a head for cars, head for Dodge, my Dodge Colt Wagon has a lift-up door. Instead of two chargers, now there's four. Coronet gives you a beautiful ride. And the wagon has a place for stuff you want to hide. If you have a head for cars, head for Dodge. Maxi Wagon, 15 people big. Ram Charger takes a towing rig. Starts pretty small, but it still holds six. Get a charge of day toning. Get some kicks. If you have a head for cars, head for your local Dodge dealer. Punt formation time for Johnny Evans. Marty back, one return man. Nine men up front for Penn State. Marty at the Penn State 25. He has it out to the 44-yard line, and Penn State's offense takes over right there. Well, Dave Robinson, what do you think? Well, right down here, there's a ter determined bunch of guys down here, and they feel that this is the time for the offense. It's now or never. It's do or die. They're going to give it to all that effort, and all of us next Lions are rooting for them, so let's go see. Okay, Dave. First down, Penn State at the Penn State 44. Five minutes, six seconds left in the game. Steve Geist. Great defensive play by defensive end Jeff Easter. Just a two-yard game. Right. 
Penn State is not sustaining their blocks as well as they did earlier in the game. You see Dave Stutz was overpowered there by uh, number 81, and of course that was the difference in that play working or not. Jeff Eastwood. Eastwood. Gain of two, second and eight. Dewey gets one yard. Tom Higgins and Jeff Easter made the tackle. And now Penn State is in a practically forced into a passing situation on third and seven. Right. I think the fans here were a little unhappy with that call. They wanted to see them go to the air then instead of going up the middle. And of course they have to go to the air now or some kind of reverse or screen. Third and seven. Broken up by Eddie Poole, intended for Donovan, and it's punt formation time with 3.59 left in the game. And Poole made a fine defensive play. Ralph Stringer is back as a single return man. Fair catch. 20-yard line of North Carolina State. And again, the pressure goes on to the Penn State defense. The running backs will be Ted Brown, number 23. Don Bucky, number 19, who's had such a sparkling day and taking passes from his brother Dave is in the game. Bucky goes left. Marshall comes right. Timmy Johnson is the other running back. This is Brown. And he stops the clock at the 25, forced out of bounds by Jeff Height after a gain of five. And there's a break for Penn State being forced out of bounds. That is a break. It's good to run wide to stop the clock, but it's very important to stay in bounds. It forced Penn State to use some vital timeouts and it keeps that clock running. So I don't think you want to see him out of bounds. Second down and five. Bucky gets three yards and it's going to be and a marker is down at the 26 yard line of North Carolina State. On the right, on the right, on the right. what's it called? 51? 51 and a white and a hold. 51 and a white. A holding penalty against North Carolina State. The question is, what do you do? Do you give them that extra time? I think probably they will set them back. Otherwise, it's a third down and two. Down to 13. I think they're going to take the penalty and make it a second long, even though it does run more time off the clock. Time left, three minutes, 42 seconds. It was either the right guard surface or the center Alcamo called for the holding, either 51 or 61. I'm not sure. It is now second down and 17 at the North Carolina State 13 yard line. The clock is running. Dennis Smugin hit down, tackled Mike Fagan. Was that ball deflected the, I, by whom? Smugin? Yes. Well, they, uh, there's a loss back to the nine yard line now. That's right. They're forcing them deep into a hole. And uh, of course, I can't believe that uh, North Carolina State can throw one up for grabs now. So I think Penn State is going to force them to punt. They'll end up with good field position. So this game is far from over. Third down and 21. There's a quick kick. A beautiful maneuver by North Carolina State. All the way back to the 10 yard line. Nine. There's a marker down. Now let's watch and listen closely. Hold it. We have 81 blue on a clip. Doing the loose ball or doing During the loose ball before he ever picked. I don't know, we didn't have first touching, so it had to be the loose ball. Loose ball. Now we're going to put back. the ball back there. All right, now wait, wait. We got a loose ball, five. Start to move to six. Okay, we could, well, well, yeah, we could go back. Hold
We're awaiting referee Bill Parkinson. We know it's clipping. We're waiting to see now since it was a loose ball foul. Listen, there's a clip. Here. Take it back and penalize him. Let me check to see if it'll be a first down. I don't think it's a first down. No first down yet, right? No. Ray, I'll tell you, that was an 80-yard quick kick and probably the call of the day because they had, they were going to have to kick on fourth down anyway. And this, as a result, they put Penn State in a deep hole where they probably would have had good field position. So you, Lou Holtz probably made the call of the day right there. Third down and five. You kicked on, you know, he, oh, he declined? Yes, oh, he declined. Clipping penalty declined. Penn State will have the ball at the Penn State 10. Two minutes and 35 seconds left in the game. And if ever a team is presented with a task, Penn State is faced with it right now. North Carolina State was down at one time 14 to nothing. Leads by one point. 15-14. Barvin, Shaq, and Donovan come to the left. Intended for Donovan, incomplete. It'll be second and ten. I, I think I said the ball was at the ten yard line. I was mistaken. It's at the thirteen yard line. All right, you can't fault Andrus there. He had it on target. He had his hands on it, but he just couldn't hold on to it. And of course, that would have got him out where they had some room to operate because when you're down in there, it's really tough. Second and ten. Barvin check right, Donovan left. Donovan, great play by Eddie Poole. Defensive halfback Eddie Poole. Eddie Poole has been one of their big playmakers all year, and he made a big play there because Donovan almost had it in his hand, and he slapped it away right at the last second. Watch on the recent play, the timing here. Donovan goes up. Gets the ball and then a real great play by Eddie Poole. Cephalo to the left on third and ten. Ball batted in the air. By tackle Jim Henderson, it is fourth down. And with 2.19 left, Penn State sends in the kicking unit. And we just can't say enough about what this North Carolina State defense has done here in the second half. That's right. They put Penn State in a position where they've had to pass. And of course, that's not Penn State. That's not the best part of their offense. Now all he can do is kick and hope for a mistake in order to get the ball again. Short punt. But a good roll. North Carolina State will have the ball at the North Carolina State 37 yard line. Two minutes and five seconds left in the game. Penn State has all their timeouts left. They have three timeouts, and possibly they'll have to use them while North Carolina State has the ball. So when they get the ball back, they may not have any timeouts left. Marshall comes out to the right. Timmy Johnson is held for no gain. Ron Coder was the first to make contact, and then Ron Crosby. Penn State asks for a timeout with exactly two minutes left. It will be second down and about 11. There actually was a loss of a yard on the first running play. It's hard to believe that at one time Penn State led 14 to nothing, but North Carolina State just beat the clock with a touchdown at the end uh, just before the first half ended, and they missed the extra point. But 15 unanswered points by North Carolina State. A 
another capacity crowd here at Beaver Stadium on what has been just a magnificent fall afternoon. Finale for 22 Penn State seniors. Brilliant performance put on today by Dave Bucky and Joe Paterno uh, mentioned last evening. He said he's the best quarterback we will have seen this season. I think he's right. And I just saw those oranges laying on the field. And that, of course, makes you think how much some of these games mean sometimes when you see those oranges laying around. Second down. A little more than 10 for a first down. North Carolina State at the North Carolina State 37. Penn State has two timeouts remaining. Exactly two minutes left in the game. Everybody is in tight except Marshall. Out to the 40-yard line for Ted Brown. Ran into Rod Coder. Another timeout by Penn State. One timeout only remaining now. It's going to be third and eight at the North Carolina State 40. And we would remind you again that next week we'll have the Penn State Football Television Network special. We'll be able to see highlights of the 1975 season, a preview of the upcoming Penn State pit game. We'll have comments from the Penn State coaches and many more features. We have Lou Holtz on the right talking with his quarterback Dave Bucky and we have Joe Paterno over in the left deciding uh, what he's going to do when they get the ball. He was talking with Jim O'Hora, one of his assistant coaches. North Carolina State has a third and eight. The ball just short of the NC State 40-yard line. You know, last year, Ray, the same thing. Penn State went to Maryland, had a cliffhanger, played very hard, and won and came back and were upset by North Carolina State. And so far, what has happened today is similar to last year, even though this game is a long way from over because if they hold them here, they're going to get another opportunity with about a minute and a half to go to see if they can get something on the board. Third and eight. Brown gets it out to the 43-yard line where Quinn and Rosecrans stop him. So it's punt formation time. 149 left. And Bill Crummy, a defensive halfback, will be in on this punt return. I think here we're going to see possibly 11 man rush. Either that or they'll set up the return. They do it either of two ways. A lot of times when they're going to rush, they put 10 men up there. And of course, on the return, they uh, leave two or three men deep to block for the uh, receiver. Fourth down, five. And the clock again, we would remind you, one minute and 49 seconds left in the game. So far, just the single return man, Crummy. Evans, the punter, one of the best in the nation. Although he has not kicked up to his average today. Mainly because Pent, there's a marker down where it may have a see what we have. We got a delay game. Delay of game, North Carolina State. I notified you, Cap. One, two, three, four, five. Right. They have a timeout. Yes, yes, yes. Lou Holtz has thrown his hat, went out onto the field, complaining to one of the officials about the delay of game penalty. So now uh, North Carolina State loses five yards. Nobody's going to be in as a return man now. 11 men up front. Crummy left the field. There goes a marker. I got, I got defensive. Okay. Illegal procedure, Penn State. Right, the so clock has not moved, by the way. That's right. It was on a timeout. That delay of game was a little puzzling to me, but that time you could see that uh, Odell crossed the uh, neutral zone before the ball was snapped. Of course, that's a violation. Now remember, Crummy left the field just before uh, we thought the ball would be snapped, and there's no return man back now. One is away, no return into the end zone. Penn State will start from the Penn State 20. A minute and 43 seconds left in the game. Now, 
Does Penn State have any timeouts left, Max? No, they used all three of them on those three particular plays. They either got to get the ball out of bounds on some of these pass plays, or they're going to run out of time or hit a long one. Geis and Taylor, the running backs, behind quarterback John Andrus. Jimmy Cephalo, wide right. This is for Barbenshack. Beautiful play by Eddie Poole. He's made a number of outstanding defensive plays here in the fourth quarter. It'll be second down and ten. It was a little strange there that Barbenshack almost had a chance to catch that ball. He had single coverage way down deep, and I would think Maryland would, I mean, uh, North Carolina State would probably put more men deep. Second down and 10. A minute 36 left in the game. Cephalo. First down. He stops the clock at the 32-yard line. 128 left in the game. I think that's the way to do it, Ray. There's plenty of time here to get that ball down the field if you can get it to somebody on the sideline. But evidently, uh, North Carolina State gave that sideline up. So I think that's the place you should go to work so you can get somebody out of bounds. You still got Chris Barr, one of the top kickers in the nation, waiting on the sideline. Cephalo is to the left. Barbin Chack to the right. Out of bounds, incomplete, intended for Barbin Chack. Stringer defending along with Richard Wheeler, the free safety. And so it is second and 10 at the Penn State 32 with a minute and 22 seconds left in the game. Well, they're trying to get one deep to Barbenchak in order to get the field goal range. But don't forget they can still get the ball to somebody on the sidelines. Second and ten. Marvin Jack at the 48-yard line. First down. At the 48-yard line of North Carolina State. A minute and 14 seconds left. That stops the clock. With 1.10 left, it'll be second and ten at the North Carolina State 48 as Andrus merely concerned himself with stopping the clock. That's right. He wisely threw it out of bounds to stop the clock. So therefore, with this much time, they can still hit a guy inside, come up and throw an incomplete pass and have plenty of time for a field goal. So I think we're going to see another finish of, that like we saw last week, only this time it's Penn State trying to catch up instead of trying to keep somebody else from catching up. It is second down and ten as we lock and look at the respective sidelines. Cephalo to the right, Barbin Chack to the left. Three man rush line for North Carolina State. Marker down. The delay of game. Delay of game, Penn State. Geis that time was handed the ball. Higgins hit him, but delay of game against Penn State, and it's going to be second down and 15 at the Penn State 47 yard line. A minute and nine seconds remaining now, and Andy Bailey, the Nittany Lion, is probably the most nervous guy here, Max. I think he is. There's about 59,000 people that are a little apprehensive right now, too, including Coach Joe Paterno. Second and 15. Geist. Fumble. Who came up with the ball? Bar 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 came up with it. It was a gain of six. It is third down, nine, 47-yard line. The clock running, 45 seconds left in the game. Barbenchak stopped running around the 25-yard line. Did you see what happened to Barvin Chuck? I think they was forced out of bounds. As a result, you become an imp. Uh, you're not eligible to catch a pass, so evidently, once he was out of bounds, he stopped. Fourth down, Scott Fitzke comes in on a do-or-die 
fourth and nine at the North Carolina State 47. 35 seconds left. Bitsky comes out to the left. Cephalo wing back left. Cephalo. seconds left. He might have fought his way close to the first down, which will stop the clock, and he was trapped, got loose, and made, if he makes his first down, it would absolutely be the play of the year. The clock is stopped with 23 seconds left. Measurement for the down. I think the clock stops, starts with the whistle here, Ray, so they better be up and ready. If this is the first down, they're still in this ballgame. I think he has the first down at the 37-yard line of North Carolina State. All right, first down. First down. What an effort by Cephalo. I thought he was trapped twice, and he still made a first down. So they got four downs, and they got 23 seconds, so anything can happen right now. Taylor is the one running back. I will watch when the clock starts. 23 seconds. The clock started right there. Cephalo goes out of bounds, stops the clock. He goes out after a gain of about three to the 33 yard line. The wind is blowing, remember, in a way that does not favor Penn State. It's favoring North Carolina State. 18 seconds left. And it very definitely does not favor a soccer-style kicker because the spin they put on that ball and the hook they put on it, the wind is blowing definitely against it. That's why Chris Barr has had trouble making field goals here today. I think they need about another 7 to 10 yards. Second and 7. This is Geis. He stops the clock. 29-yard line. He had to get out of bounds, and that was a great play by Geis. He was almost trapped. If he doesn't get out of bounds, there's no time left. So now it's Chris Barr, and who could ask for anything better than this? It'll be an attempt of 46 yards, 13 seconds left, a difficult wind. Barvin Chack will hold. North Carolina State leading by one. Greg Kubis must center the ball. No. Wide to the right. Chris Barr is unable to do it. Into a very difficult win. North Carolina State has the football. Eight seconds remaining in one of the great thrillers, Max McGee, that I think I've ever seen. We've seen the last two weeks. One went good for Penn State. This one happened to go bad. In two weeks, though, we've seen some great college football. And regardless what happens here today, Penn State played well. And had they made that field goal, it would have been a great victory for them. So all North Carolina State has to do, of course, is hold on to the football. Eight seconds left. Quarterback Dave Bucky, who has been brilliant today, fell on the ball on the last play of the game. North Carolina State, for the second year in a row, has upset Penn State. This game is over. The final score, North Carolina State 15, Penn State 14. We'll be back right after this. Well, Max McGee, last week, as you said, Maryland had a chance to win it in the closing seconds. Unable to do it, Penn State held on. And today, a, a North Carolina State team that I think it's safe to say could have given up, down 14 to nothing early, 
but they didn't and they came back with 15 unanswered points and in a thrilling finish managed to hang on for a hard earned win. That's right Ray I was I've mentioned it earlier in the, in the game when Penn State came out today they were blowing holes in that North Carolina state line they got ahead 14 to nothing and it's not unusual for a good team then to relax a little bit Unco it's a subconscious deal it happens a lot of the time and as a result you can't turn it back on and Miss Penn State from that time on never really got their offense going again. So what can you say uh, a big touchdown before halftime put the North Carolina State back and all at once you got a football game and a Penn State could just couldn't get it turned on again. Let's let's go down to the field now with Dave Robinson and Joe Paterno. Joe, I don't know what to say. It was a tough game and sad but exciting anyway. Yeah, well, North Carolina State beat us. They, they played very, very well. And Bucky had a super hot hand there for a while. He and his brother were great athletes. And Higgins, uh, the middle guard, played a superb game for them. And after they tightened up the defense. Well, I was proud of our kids. We never quit. We kept coming after them. And, you know, play here and a play there. But it was a great right. college football game. And uh, we don't have any alibis. Uh, right. We got to get together now and go after our next the next right. ball game we have. I was thank coaches. Give my best to the guys. Right. 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 All right, that's it from down here in the field. For Max McGee and Dave Robinson, this is Ray Scott saying so long from Beaver Stadium, where the final score was North Carolina State 15, Penn State 14. Promotional consideration from Herbert's Men's Shop, Heights Plaza Shopping Center, Pittsburgh. This game has been brought to you by the Dodge Boys. If you have a head for cars, head for Dodge. And buy Kentucky Fried Chicken. Real goodness from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Executive producer of Penn State football is Nelson L. Goldberg. This game has been produced by Guido D'Elia and directed by Brian Seif. Associate producer Sue Devlin. Be with us again next week when we look at the highlights of the 75 season and preview the Pitt Penn State game. Production and technical facilities by TPC Pittsburgh. This has been a TCS production.